Hi, my name's Cheese, and today I'm going to talk about setting up a particular type of painting technique using the GIMP. A couple of weeks ago, a friend of mine asked how he could get a particular type of behavior using a pressure-sensitive tablet. By default, and when we uh, when we draw a line with a light stroke, we end up with a, a light line. If we do it a bit harder, we end up with a darker line. If we do it as hard as we can, we end up with a black line. Typically, if you draw a line that crosses itself, um, it doesn't adjust the opacity where it overlaps. But if you draw a second line that passes that first one, it does. So we can see here that uh, the intersection is uh, is much darker. And what he was after was being able to have this kind of effect uh, that you would have from a single stroke using multiple strokes. And I thought about this for a while, and um, it didn't seem like that was the sort of thing that there would be any kind of default setting for. There's some setting uh, called increment, which allows you to have when a stroke passes itself to make itself darker, but uh, it was kind of the opposite of what we we're after. So what we ended up doing was um, uh, coming down here and making a new um, dynamics option. So just bring our palette up here. So create a new one, and I'm going to call this stuff. Brilliant. And what we want the uh, the pressure to adjust, looking at the mapping matrix here, is color. Now, if we uh, we come back to the paintbrush, and we're already using our stuff dynamics option there, we can see now that when we do a hard stroke, it's a uh, light stroke, it's darker. When we do a hard stroke, it's whiter, and we can actually paint white over the top of the black there. So it's going from the foreground color to the background color. If we scroll down a bit under the dynamics options, we'll see that there's a gradient that controls this. There are a lot of different options that we can play with here, but for now we want foreground to background. Now this still isn't quite what we're after. Um, we don't want to accidentally make something lighter by painting uh, heavily across it. So I'm going to clear this off. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer. Uh, and we're going to fill it with the color that we would, would kind of end up wanting to be using in the end. Uh, so in this case we're going to go with this sort of um, orangey goldy color and we're going to fill the entire layer with that color. The next thing we're going to do is add a layer mask and we're going to set that to black so that the entire mask is fully transparent, uh, the entire layer is fully transparent. Uh, and we're back here uh, as we were before with a, uh, a white screen. So with the mask selected over here we're going to go back to the default colors that we had before, which allow that, allows that gradient to go from black to white again. Uh, and we're going to paint on here. Now remembering that a, uh, a light stroke makes a darker line, and a heavier stroke makes a, 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 a whiter line. Um, in the context of the mask, white allows the original layer, or the, the masked layer, to show through, and black keeps it transparent. So if we draw a light line, we can, uh, can get some nice stuff going on there. If we draw a heavy line, we can get a heavy thing going on. You'll see that we end up with a dot at the end. Uh, and that's because as we release the pen, it ends up drawing something lighter, or sorry, it ends up drawing something that is darker on the mask uh, and makes that more transparent. And that's not what we want. So if we go to the uh, the painting mode, we set that to lighten only. And now when we do the end of our strokes, it kind of keeps the, the sort of thing that we would expect uh, to be there, which is fantastic. So now if we paint past a, uh, a partially transparent line that we've done before. We can see that it's not, um, the intersection is not increasing the opacity. We actually have to push harder if we want to get that. Um, now you're probably asking what, what sort of stuff you want to use this for. Uh, oh, hang on, we don't want to do that. We want to uh, select all and clear this mask with black as the background color, which puts it back to transparent. Um, say that you're uh, you want to draw a circle? No. You can draw a better circle than that. So we've drawn... Gosh, I don't even know what I'm doing. Alright, here we go. We've drawn a circle. We can um, paint lightly, but we can increase the pressure as we go and have a very fine control over what we end up with. If we miss a bit, we can paint underneath it. As long as we don't push harder than the uh, opacity of the the bit that we're working on, we can, we can kind of fill it in, or paint beneath it, if that makes sense. And we can kind of match that up. 
get it ready for blending, make it quite nice. Now this mask technique can be used for uh, for any of the paint tools. If we prefer to smudge things here, we can certainly do that without any problems. If we want to use the blur tool, we can do that as well. You can blur up those edges there, blending it in to make a uh, a much more smooth kind of gradient. I don't know what necessarily whether this is likely to be a useful technique for uh, for everyone, but um, it's certainly something that uh, was a fun challenge to mess around with. So there you have it. The uh, obvious, the other question, or the other thing that you may want to do is to decrease the opacity once you've already painted. So coming back to our paint tool here, um, we can do a dark line. If we want to make that a light line, what we're going to have to do is change this to darken only and flip the direction of the gradient. So now we can we can paint away the opacity that we've created there. And that's just effectively putting white on the mask so that with a light stroke so that we can uh, have good control there and um, paint whatever it is that we desire. So there we go. That's how to do uh, a technique that I haven't named uh, in the GIMP. Hope that's been interesting. If you know of a better way to do this, uh, I'd certainly love to hear about it. But uh, as far as I'm aware, this is sort of the only way you can get this kind of behavior going on um, is using masks and gradient um, opacity, uh, gradient pressure changes. Um, but yeah, so enjoy and have fun.